Hi, everyone. My name is Adeline Wolfgang. I'm very excited to be here today and speak to you about my experiences. And this is, I might have to go over here. Okay, the right. Okay, here we go. All right, so a little background about me. I was a Mizzou 2014 graduate, majored in textile apparel management with an emphasis on marketing merchandising. I moved out to New York after college where I've been for four years, and I'm currently an account executive at The Laundress, which I'll go into a little bit more later and tell you about my um, company and my day to day. First, I just wanna go through um, my topic. So my topic today is being open to new opportunities. Uh, I remember sitting where you all are today just four years ago um, during the advisory board panel and looking up at the board and thinking, wow, how am I ever going to get to where they are? You know, after school I need this internship, this first job, and so on and so on. It feels a little daunting. But the biggest advice I can give is just be open, um, open-minded when you're getting out there, whether it's your internships or your first job out of school. Um, it makes all the difference. I think it's getting cut off a little, but um, so just a little bit about my career path, and you'll kind of see why I chose the topic of openness. Um, to start here from the beginning, so when I was a <laughs> when I was um, in school, I had two summer internships in New York City. Um, the summer before my junior year, I was interning at. Michael Kors, and the, I was a visual merchandising intern, and then the summer after that, I was at this company called The Toby Report, which is a trend forecasting company. Both were great experiences, and from them I was able to learn a lot, and most importantly, I learned kind of where I wanted to go after school, and I knew I wanted to be back in New York, wanted to work in the fashion industry, and I would just kind of figure out the rest. So after school, um, I decided to move to New York. It's rather challenging to try to find a job while still in Missouri. You kind of have to just be there. It's a quick city. So I gave myself a timeline. I said, OK, I'll give myself three months. And if I don't have a job, figure it out from there. So while I was looking for um, jobs and interviewing, I was taking on freelance positions, part-time gigs. I dog sit a little, babysat, anything I could do to stay in the city. And then it was in August that I got the opportunity to um, join Chanel and work as a boutique operations assistant, an office assistant, for their flagship boutique. So this wasn't kind of the career path I saw myself going down. I was really kind of targeting more corporate roles, and this was working in the retail environment. But it was a great opportunity, a great brand, and I just thought, I need a job, so let's see where this goes. So kind of a little bit about what does it mean to be a boutique operations assistant? So I was working in the flagship boutique on a Madison Avenue in New York City. There are about 75 employees and a management team of 12 people. So it was a, a, a business in a sense. Um, so from that, I got great experience. I was working with clients over the phone, learning about the product, the company, um, supporting the management staff. I was uh, helping with special events, so working with the events team on the corporate side, kind of helping plan these events and executing them in the boutique. I was managing payroll for all of the boutique um, employees. So it was a lot, and it was, it was a great experience, but from that I kind of learned I really wanted to get to know more of the business side of the industry, and so I began interviewing again, um, and it was in March. Um, 2016 that I got the opportunity to go work at Burberry in their wholesale division. So I thought this is a great time to kind of test it out and see if this is the path I want to go down. So I took the role as assistant account executive at Burberry, started out in the children's wear division and then eventually moved over to women's accessories. Um, it was a great experience as well and kind of from there I found out this is where I wanted to be. Um, so what, what is wholesale, what, did, what does it mean to be an assistant account executive? So my main role um, while at Burberry was just supporting our director of sales, our account executives. So the account executives were the ones that were managing our, our larger volume accounts, such as Nordstrom, Bloomingdale's, Saks, Neiman's, 
and I had responsibility of our smaller accounts, such as Zappos and specialty boutiques. So my week, it kind of varied day to day, depending on what fire drill is thrown at me, but I could be doing anything from analyzing the sales from the previous week and um, kind of figuring out how our business was performing, trying to get into reorder opportunities. Um, it could be managing sample requests and working with our accounts to get our product featured in advertisement and marketing opportunities. And also just ensuring that the product was there on the floor, it was being delivered on time, training the associates to make sure it would sell. Um, on a seasonal basis, I'm sure you've heard of market. So market is a crazy time that happens four times a year in wholesale. And that's when the buyers come in and we show them the collection. And a lot of people think it's schmoozing and just showing off pretty clothes. But there's a lot of hard work that goes into it, a lot of analyzing the numbers, seeing um, how things performed the previous season, and um, just really understanding the product. So currently, I'm now an account executive at The Laundress. And it's actually a newer role. I started um, this past May. So doing um, similar things as an assistant, but the difference is, as an account executive, I now have full ownership of my accounts and I manage accounts on my own. So I'm managing um, Nordstrom, Saks, Amazon, and then about 400 specialty boutiques that we have across the US. Um, tell you a little bit about The Laundress. It was founded 15 years ago by two women that actually worked in the fashion industry. One of the founders was in corporate sales at Chanel and the other was in design at Ralph Lauren. So they basically decided to create the brand. Um, they went to school together at Cornell, studied textile and apparel management, and knew that there was a solution to taking care of your clothes. They were tired of paying for dry cleaning, things getting ruined. So they decided to create the laundress, um, and it is a collection of deter eco-friendly detergents, fabric care, and home cleaning solutions. So that is what I sell to our accounts. Um, it is a lot different than my previous roles because I worked in bigger corporations. This is a smaller, leaner team. But it's great because I'm, I'm getting exposure to a side of the business I wouldn't normally. Uh, with a smaller company, you don't have to jump through as many, many hoops to get um, an idea approved. So that's fun to see how you can really make an impact on a business and help grow. We do a lot of co-branding. So for instance, um, we have a signature detergent that's great for your cottons, your, your linens, and we'll sell that to um, our packets to Brooklinen, which is a bedding company. Uh, we have more specialized detergents that are, one example is our wool and cashmere shampoo. So that is where the elimination of dry cleaning comes in. So we'll work with other brands that sell wool and cashmere and kind of do a co-branding collaboration. So it's, it's fun, it's, it's different and trying something new and gaining more experience. So as you can see, that's kind of where my topic comes in about being open because I have had a few different turns in my career, but ultimately it's, it's helped me learn what I wanna do and what I don't wanna do and led me to where I am now. So just a few, few more takeaways um, as I wrap up. I know a lot of you are probably starting to look for internships, thinking about part-time jobs, ways to build your resume. So my advice to you would just be to be open um, to trying something new. Now's the time to test it out. For instance, I thought I really wanted to do visual merchandising when I was in school. It's like, I want to be a visual merchandiser and do the display windows at Chanel or Gucci or wherever. And I tried that out and I realized, mm, this isn't for me. <laughs> um, so I realized I gravitated more to the business side of things. And that's okay because from that I was able to figure out what I wanted to do. And um, when it comes to landing your first job, which I know a lot of you um, are starting to graduate in December and May, and it can seem daunting, like how do I go from point A to B? I just say have a direction, but be open to other opportunities or something that's inside the realm of what you're looking for. There's only so many buying jobs, for instance. So if you feel that you're having trouble landing that buying job after school, maybe try planning or merchandising. 
something that's in the realm of what you're looking for, where you can gain those transferable skills that can then help you build a, a well, more well-rounded portfolio. So when that buying position does come up, you have a skill set. Um, so there, there are a lot of different twists and turns your career can take, but ultimately I would just say be open because you never know where your dream job will be. Thanks. <laughs>